the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64GB memory card is the best thing for on-the-go 4K shooting. Affiliate link below. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and we've got some info on Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm actually really excited about this. Uh, Ant-Man was one that I, I arguably was not the most excited for. I really wanted Edgar Wright to direct it. I felt that Marvel kind of like fucked him over in terms of how that whole situation played out, considering he'd been developing Ant-Man for Marvel Studios since 2006, and nine years later, Peyton Reed's version of it came out. But that being said, I felt that Peyton Reed really brought it. And I felt that the movie was utterly fantastic. Paul Rudd as Scott Lang nailed it. And then the next year when he made his cameo appearance in Civil War, it just further solidified that Ant-Man is the shit. And just that level of optimism, right, that we get from what we got from Scott Lang in those movies, I, I feel is something that is desperately needed in the MCU. I, this is an odd kind of comparison, but like everyone's like, you know, walks out of Wonder Woman and they're like, oh, yeah, hope, optimism and love. And it's kind of like, yeah, Ant-Man did the exact same thing but nowhere near as much recognition. I'm hoping that the sequel, I'm really hoping that the sequel, brings it. But uh, with the addition of the Wasp, as well as the original Wasp, with Michelle Pfeiffer taking over the role of Janet Van Dyne, I'm, I'm really hoping that we get more of that. Uh, and it's not like cynical or bitter, because this is going to have the first, you know, not the first female superhero, but it's, you know, one of the first female starring roles, I guess I should say, uh, given the fact that, you know, the Wasp is the second billing. And so with that, Marvel has announced today that the uh, movie has begun production, and they revealed the synopsis and a little bit of a teaser video. So this is the 15 second teaser video that that they that they put out because you know seriously they can't give us more than 15 seconds <laughs> and that's it just just a little mini ant-man chair and wasp chair and that's adorable that again i think that sets the tone for what they're trying to bring like the movies have all had very similar, uh, you know, they, they, it's been homogenized, let's be fair here. And ever since Guardians of the Galaxy, they've been really working with more color palettes as evidenced by Doctor Strange at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Thor Ragnarok. I mean, after this, this next set of Avengers films, we start looking heavily to the cosmos and I have a feeling color is going to play a large part in that. But, you know, you can sit there and change your themes and you can sit there and change a lot of other things. But if you don't have the right characters in the right roles or the right actors in the right roles uh bringing it it's not it may, it may not work all the way and there's always been lots of underlying humor when it comes to the marvel films but i look at ant-man as being one that you could pretty much call a comedy adventure uh like it's that side of it you know what i mean and that's like because of of, of how scott is and how like michael pena's character is uh and everything else like it really brought that kind of just gut-wrenching laughter to marvel that is actually pretty well needed to be fair uh but let's take a look down here at the synopsis of the thing so it doesn't give you much but it does say from the marvel cinematic universe comes a new chapter featuring heroes with astonishingly ability to shrink ant-man and the wasp in the aftermath of captain america's civil war scott lang grapples with the consequences of his choices as both a superhero and a father as he struggles to rebalance his home life with his responsibilities as ant-man he's confronted by hope van dyne and dr hank pym with an urgent new mission scott must once again put on the suit and learn how to fight alongside the Wasp as a team works together to uncover the secrets from their past. So it's very, it's, it's very vague, but I think there's a lot that can be pulled from that. So you've got, uh, for one, how did he escape the jail, right? That the prison at the end of civil war. I mean, clearly captain America showed back up at the end, uh, to, to let out everybody. You know, he broke in and rescued everybody. But then there's that line from Spider-Man Homecoming where they're showing the Captain America PSAs and Hannibal Burris is like, I'm pretty sure that dude's a war criminal now, but I got to show you these videos. And it's a great little line that kind of, yeah, like, wait, wouldn't Captain America at this point, because he didn't 
uh, follow the Sokovia Accords be considered a war criminal? I mean, that is a very valid thought process that never really gets touched upon, and it may not get touched upon very much in Avengers Infinity War. But that being said, in the Infinity War trailer leak, sorry Marvel, I've watched it a lot. Uh, they show you Captain America, uh, and spoiler alert, he has a beard. <laughs> It's so, it's like dark, gritty Captain America. I feel like they're trying to like, I feel like both Captain America and Superman are going to have beards in the next year. So to me, that's pretty funny. Uh, but that being said, we, we, you know, we, we know that he got out. And so somehow he'll be back in San Francisco trying to be both a superhero and be a father. And that was a big part of the first film trying to, you know, work with his wife or ex-wife and for custody and, and how, you know, he was this kind of big disappointment. But in the end, uh, they saw him try and they saw him defeat Yellow Jacket and they saw him save the daughter and, and they were more forgiving and they were more welcoming to the prospect of him being around his daughter's life. And that's going to be a big part of it, which is cool because it's exploring the aspect of fatherhood from, from a parent who has been forcibly kind of kept away from his child. Whereas in Spider-Man Home coming it was iron man exploring being a parent to peter uh when you know like that's kind of like he's taking on that father role to maybe a surrogate versus scott lang who has his actual daughter that he's trying to be there for you know and be the hero she wants right so there's a lot that's like that, that's there in the family dynamic and you can kind of see marvel really toying with this but of course when it comes to the the urgent new mission it's it's going to be janet van dyne guaranteed uh, you know, learning the secrets from their past, like what happened to Janet, Janet, you know, shrunk again once she was, uh, you know, what's it called? Like the tiny verse or whatever. I forget what it's called. The microverse. Um, and she went into that and we saw her briefly uh, when Ant-Man went down there. And so they're going to have to figure out how to do that again in order for the wasp and Ant-Man to go in to rescue Janet Van Dyne. That's going to be the key thing, but we're probably going to learn is that some, evil shadow hydra-esque organization probably has access to this microverse or they're trying to go in there and they're gonna they're gonna maybe work on that because in, in it's at its core ant-man was a heist movie which i thought worked wonderfully and i'm hoping that they don't try to go too big for the sequel and that they keep it as grounded as they possibly can and i think that will definitely help kind of uh, solidify scott lang's place in this universe you know and so yes he is ant-man and yes, he is giant man, uh, you know, one time now in Germany. And and well, I'm sure that will be explored. Uh, that that was still my favorite scene from fucking uh, <laughs> from Civil War. Everyone's all like Spider-Man. And then like when he goes like, oh, wait, something new I've been working on. And I'm like, oh, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And then he hits the button and he becomes giant man. And I was all like, ah, that's so awesome. I was so happy. So happy. I love, I just, I love Paul Rudd's energy and I love how Paul Rudd brings it. And so that's how I took that. But anyway, looking at this, I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be the first film to come out post Avengers Infinity War part one, right? Like we know that it's going to deal with the aftermath of the events from that. And, and very similar to how Spider-Man Homecoming 2 is going to start like four minutes after the end of the fourth Avengers film. And so again, it's a lot going on with that right now. We're going to be getting these stories that are going to really bring home what Marvel's attempting to do with the MCU. And it will be curious to see what will happen directly following the events of next year's big, you know, Avengers team up movie. So in the meantime, what do you guys think about this? Does the plot line sound just too vague? Do you think it sounds cool? Are you excited for Ant-Man and the Wasp? Do you want more Scott Lang or do you want them to go back and kind of give us Hank Pym as Ant-Man? Those things I'm curious about. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.